Today I'm going to be installing an electric fan in my T-Bird. If you've watched some of my other videos, you know I've been trying to get it to run cool and stay cool. Everything I've done so far has helped a lot. And if I'm driving the car, it runs great. I could run all day long and not overheat. But when I stop for any extended period of time at a stoplight or just letting it idle, why the temperature gauge still starts to creep up and I don't like that. So what I'm gonna do now is install an electric fan. I've got a Flexalite new FlexWave fan. And what I understand on these fans is the straight bladed fans make more noise than the ones that have a little curvature to them. But these type draw a lot more air. This one here is uh, rated at 3000 CFM. And this one supposedly runs quieter because they've got a new um, design of the blade that's kind of shaped more like an airplane wing. Here's the fan itself. Let me turn it over. And uh, you see these little ribs on the outer portion of the blades? Why well, that supposedly helps it run a little quieter. And you know, it's a high efficiency fan. So that's what I'm gonna be putting on. I've also got this little adjustable fan thermostat right here. There's a relay in there and a fuse block. And then of course the wiring, and then um, here's the probe or thermostat probe. You can get different styles of these. This one here just pushes through the blades or the fins of the radiator. They've got them, you know, that screw into a water jacket. But on this T-Bird, I don't really have any place to put that type in. I would have rather had that type that actually makes contact with the water. Uh, right down here is the original sending unit that sends a temperature reading to my gauge and that's the only hole I really have. There might be one down under the block somewhere on the side of the block on one side or the other but I don't want to get down there and mess with that. Probably rusted so bad I wouldn't be able to get it out anyway. So I think the other thing will work just fine and what this will do it'll let me adjust with that little knob right here. It'll let me adjust the temperature I want the fan to engage and then It'll stay on as long as the temperature is above that amount. If the temperature ever drops below it, then it'll kick itself off. This installation is applicable to any car that you need to put an electric fan on. So just because I'm doing it on my T-Bird doesn't mean that this isn't going to work for whatever you need to put it on. With everything out of the way, I can see where this is going to best fit. Looks like kind of right at the top there. It's going to be about right. Now I was hoping to get this in here and still have my original fan here just for the more or less stock look, but I don't think that's going to work. So that's okay. I'll just have an electric fan. I'm still have my shroud in here, which will kind of hide some of that maybe. This is the stock radiator that came out of that thing because that's an aftermarket radiator. It's got more cores, it's a little thicker. Like I said, I've been trying to do everything I can to get it to cool a little better. So since I still have this one, can, this one I can use it to make my mounts. It comes with these uh, little rods and these push-on clips. And the instructions say to push these through the core of the radiator with a clip on both sides to hold it in place. But I don't really like this idea. So what I think I'm going to do is come off of these upper bolt hole mounts, slide right under here with some studs coming out with some thin, maybe 16th inch or less metal. And then a couple that are coming over this way. I'll have to drill some holes in this little flange on that radiator. And I think that would be a better way to mount this up. Okay, here's what I think I'm going to try to do. I've got these little straps. And I drilled a hole and tapped it for a quarter inch thread. So I've got these little studs that I cut, threaded rod. So I'm going to screw that in there just enough where it kind of comes through a little bit. Not that that thread's going to hold it, because this is fairly thin, it's about 50 thousandths. 
But now I'm gonna weld right here and then grind it off smooth. And then I think I can let this pop through here. I'm gonna drill a hole out here to match this. And that's all that's gonna hold that upper. And then I think I'm gonna do the same thing down here with a longer strap. Come up to this hole here. I'll have four straps that'll just kind of hang there. The radiator's on an angle like that anyway. And I think that'll hold it in place. Okay, I just welded this up. Now I'll grind it down smooth. I've got all four of these little straps made now with the studs welded on the back sides. So what I want to do now is set the shroud in place, the upper half here. Just like that. And I'm going to mark, just put a little mark here. Because these straps are kind of thin, you know, that could be a little bit of a flex to them. So now what I'm going to do is put a little support from this line down to this line to stiffen them up just a little bit. I've got these four pieces cut. Now I'm going to bend them. I'm just putting a 90 degree bend on them. Now I'm going to weld these on those other little straps to give them a little bit of strength. All right, and here's what it looks like when I'm done. I just tack welded it three spots there. That'll just give it a little bit more stiffness. I've already got these on here. So now what I'll do is give them a little quick paint job. While the paint's drying on these braces, I'll go see if I can get the electrical wiring done. I've got two things I've got to mount over here somewhere. Uh, this thermostat and this little uh, fuse or circuit breaker. And this is supposed to be as close to the fan as you can get it. This should be as close to the 12 volt power source as you can get it. So I've already kind of looked it over here. And what I think I'm gonna do is pull this water, uh, windshield washer bottle off. And I think a good place to mount this would be right under here, like that. And then I've got this relay that can go right beside it. This piece here. And then, when I put this washer bottle, or washer bag, back over, it'll kind of hide all of that, because I'm trying to keep it as stock appearing as possible. So that's what I'm going to do for that one. This thing here, I'm going to get my power source right off of the positive battery cable at the solenoid here. And right down here, would be a good place to mount that because then I can run a wire from here right up to here. And then the other wire, this big red wire here coming from the uh, relay can route right along here and tie in right there. I think those will be the least conspicuous places for these two items. So that's what I'm gonna do. I've removed the battery because I've got to drill a couple of holes right there. That's where I'm gonna mount that little circuit breaker. There it is installed. And you notice these studs sticking out of it right here where the wires hook up to. This one is copper. That goes to the battery side. So I'll run a wire from here, up here, and tie into the hot side of that solenoid. And then the other one will come back to the relay. Moving right along, here's my wire coming in here. And this wire, I had, when I cut this off, I had enough left over 
for this little piggy tail to come right over here and drop right down there. Now, I've got this gray wire that I've got to hook up to an ignition source. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the uh, red hot wire here. I'm gonna just follow it right along the edge here, come around over to here, and then tie into, uh, let's see, this one here. This one is for the starter. This one here is for the ignition, so I need to tie right into that right there. And now that ignition wire feeds right up alongside of here, right along there with that other power wire. Comes right up underneath here. It comes right down there, barely noticeable, which is what I was after. All right, everything is wired back that way. Now I've got to provide this hot wire to the fan, and the fan gets grounded. I've also got this little temperature sensor and I've got to plug into the radiator somewhere up here. Okay, from the front view here, I've got the spot right on where the probe is sticking through. I think you can see it right there. I've got the fan just temporarily in place. It's just hanging from these upper brackets. I've got this thermocouple wire coming over here. And now I've got to get these two wires from the fan hooked up. That black wire just goes to a ground. That red wire gets attached to this red wire that's coming off of the relay here. And I think what I can do is run them right through this little opening up in the corner where the thermocouple wire is going to come out. So I'm going to cut some wires, do some splicing, and get that wired up. I've got these wires all tied together and spliced together and some shrink tubing around it so it won't be flopping around too much. Now I'm going to tie them down here. I've got a little hole drilled in here and in this bracket here where I can put some cable ties, tie it down right there, keep it nice and uh, out of the way. On this end, on the positive, uh, the hot wire, I've got a connector there so I can just connect and disconnect that if I ever need to take the fan out. And then the ground wire, I'll run on out here to a chassis ground. So right now I'm just kind of doing this out here because it'll be easier than doing it when it's in place in there. Get this tied down. All right, see if I can get all this put back together now. The tricky part is gonna be getting the upper half of that shroud on here and, and get these straps sandwiched in between the shroud and the radiator. All I have left now is to put this radiator hose back on, put some water in it and drive it. Here's what it looks like in there. And here's how it ended up over here with the wiring. I am going to test it now. I've already turned the ignition switch on. So if I just turn this back here all the way to the counterclockwise, fan's supposed to come on. And then what I'll do is drive it and bring it up to temperature and then I can adjust this little knob here to where I want it to kick on once it gets warmed up. So that'll be the next step. Okay, I'm going to take it out for a spin now to bring that temperature up. What I found in the past is when this orange needle gets all the way to the right side of that uh, white bar there like kind of straight up from this M right here that's where its uh, normal running temperature is about 180 or so 
So when it gets up to that point, I'm gonna pull over and I'll go out there and set that thermostat to where the fan will just come on at that point. Okay, I'm gonna turn off of this busy road onto this little side street, make this adjustment. Okay, the fan just kicked on, so that's where I'm going to set it. Lots of air coming out of there. Take it for a nice long drive, see how it does. And from inside the car while I'm driving, can't really hear that fan running. When I was uh, got back in the car at first, when I was just idling, I could hear it just slightly. So it's not too objectionable. Okay, I've been driving about 20 minutes or so, a little over 20 minutes. I even stopped and got gas a while ago. Of course, while the engine was shut off getting gas, the gauge went way on up, but as soon as I started it up, why it came right back down to about where it was. So, it seems to be working pretty good. I guess time will tell. It's only in the low 70s today, but in the middle of the summer coming up when it's 100 out there, I guess I'll know for sure. I did get uh, stuck at a couple of red lights and the temperature didn't really change during that period. So that's encouraging. And this fan I bought was a universal fan. So it should work on any application you might have. I bought a puller, which means it goes behind the radiator and pulls air through. You could also get a pusher type fan in the same same one, just put it down on the other side of the radiator and push air through. I didn't want to go that route because in my opinion, you're just blocking the airflow by putting something in front of the radiator. So that's why I went with the puller and uh, could suck air through. So I hope this video has been a little bit of help to you. You need to put a fan on, it's not too complicated, as you can see, and uh, seems to work pretty good in my situation here right now. Thanks for watching.